are working on research problems in the intersection of art and artificial intelligence. We design algorithms to help them to perceive visual fine art. But in latest research, we moved forward and helped computers to assign paintings a creativity score. For something to be creative, it has to be a novel from its prior, from the, what happens before it, but also it has to be a, 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 of, of value, influential. Basically, computers look at a large set of paintings and they are able to assess or quantify creativity of these paintings, given its historical context. Uh, how it works, how the algorithm works. So um, uh, basically we create um, what we call a network between all paintings that we have. So every, every two paintings are connected to each other uh, based on how they resemble each other, how similar they are. Based on this network, we did some mathematical uh, reduction, some transformation that convert this problem to what's called a network centrality problem. The algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure which you need to take them to uh, solve the problem. And in the language of computers, it's basically a programming language, a step-by-step -step programming language, which in general, your computer takes input in and produce an output. Imagine uh, every painting has a set of creativity tokens. Uh, and all the paintings start with the same creativity tokens in the beginnings, but then paintings will pass these tokens around uh, based on their dates and how they resemble each other until we reach some equilibrium. And that's where we get the final scores. I would say I was very fortunate that I'm here at Rutgers because uh, I've been in a really good community of researchers. We call it the Art and, and Artificial Intelligence Lab, which is a, a lab that's in intersection between computer science and art and art history. You never have the freedom that you have in a research institute. Here, whatever I do, I get the attention, and if it's really interesting, then I get the credit. In the iPhone, that's an artificial intelligence component. When you use your camera and do face detection or automatic focusing, all these are somehow artificial intelligence components. One common interpretation of AI these days is that AI is going to replace humans. I personally don't believe in that. And I think if we as humans are intelligent enough, we should find uh, new roles for ourselves. So more and more you are going to have artificial intelligence coming into the machines that you are using on a daily basis. So it would be a, a better place if the machines are smarter.